I know, I know, you're sick to death of the Red Bull drama. So let's talk about another facet of Red Bull. Who's going to be in the second seat next year? And the thing that's made it all the more interesting since I last talked about this is that Checo is back in the game. If you're familiar with my 2025 driver predictions video, you probably are considering Lewis took the aging liquid out of the receptacle and of course conjured it up into rancid milk. But in that, I predicted that Yuki Tsunoda would get the plum in partnering Max Verstappen for 2025 over the likes of Daniel Ricciardo. That was a couple of months ago, but now at the beginning of 2024, Things have changed considerably, and I would like to revisit an old idea I had back last year. And we're not going to be discussing the idea of Max Verstappen leaving and leaving two open seats open at Red Bull, considering that Helmut Marko's position within the outfit is getting a little bit shaky, even though they're saying it's not. And also for the fact that just a few days ago, they said that there's no way that Max would ever leave Red Bull. A few days later, it's changed to we won't stand in Max's way, whatever happens. That's an ever evolving thing. But right now, we're not going to be discussing that part. We're talking about who is going to partner Max Verstappen should he be remaining at Red Bull for 2025. So let's just begin with Checo. Of course, we got to start with the incumbent. And the last time we discussed this topic, things weren't looking all that great for Perez. However, things are looking absolutely fantastic for Sergio Perez in the first two races of 2024, with getting two second places in a row with no dramas whatsoever save for a five second time penalty, we managed to have a driver who's been delivering the goods in the wake of everything melting down around him. Him being the most uncomplicated part of the Red Bull machine going for the last few weeks. There's no drama with Checo anymore. We had all of that last year. And he's now doing exactly what Christian Horner and Red Bull want him to do. Be the perfect second driver to Max and get the results. Be on the podium or win a Grand Prix if Max Verstappen were defaulted by an accident or some kind of reliability issue. So far, there's been no noise about Checo. He's just been getting on with his job. This is really making it more and more likely that he might get a contract extension after all. Up until maybe just a few weeks ago, everyone thought it was a done deal that Checo would see out 2024 no longer being at Red Bull or maybe retiring from F1 altogether. But right now, Checo is pretty much eating gravy. He is just getting on with the business. He has nothing to do with all of the drama. He can just plot out his race and have a good time in a really, really good car, which he has said many times is quite agreeable. Although there is still stuff to work on. He's been quite mature and very uh, resolute with the prospect of 2024. Having said that though, if the other cars do upgrade themselves quite quickly and McLaren and Ferrari find themselves right on the tail of Red Bull, and this might mean that Perez ends up losing a couple of positions, this might make things a little bit more tricky. But right now, if he can bag all these P2s and maybe the occasional P3 right at the beginning of the season, it's going to make the end of the season when all the other teams are caught up far less stressful for Checo, which means that probably second place will be sewn up relatively quickly because come on, thanks to Checo's consistency, Red Bull are nearly at 100 points in the constructors, whereas Ferrari don't even have 50 yet. There is a huge gap already and we're only in the second race. So if Checo can keep this up, there's no need to replace him, especially when you're getting all of this turmoil and Red Bull eating itself completely whole and Checo being the only bit that's remained a constant and consistency and constancy, sometimes in Formula One, is a godsend. And I bet it helps tremendously with not having Marco as a thorn in his backside anymore. That is just a huge weight off his mind, probably. If we can just see more of this and we can see more of the Checo that we saw at Force India and in Racing Point, the guy who was able to provide consistent podiums, solid points finishes, getting that team fourth place in the constructors, getting that Silverstone based team their first win since Giancarlo Fisichella in 2003. 17 year gap between Fisichella and Checo. So. More of that, please, Checo. More of that. Then the most likely, I don't think it's Daniel anymore. I'm going to stick by what I said in my predictions video and say it might be Yuki Tsunoda. Wait, really? You really think Yuki's done enough to better Daniel? Well, it's not entirely that per se. More like Daniel's not really done himself as good of a service. I mean, we'll get to him in a moment, and there have been other factors that have impeded his advancement in 2024. Over the last few months, when Daniel Ricciardo subbed in for Nick De Vries, and then when Liam Lawson took him over, and then Daniel Ricciardo came back in, everyone was expecting Yuki Tsunoda to completely drown after having carried the team for the first half of the season, scoring the team their only points. And then it all culminated in Abu Dhabi with a really masterful display where he at one point led the race. 
Even though Mexico wasn't exactly one of his best times of it when Daniel shone, that wasn't a really good time for Yuki. But at the same time, he held his own. He didn't completely get lost in the world of Daniel Ricardo coming back. Sure, the hype for Daniel is huge, it is immense, and probably one of the main contributors for Visa getting in on the action. Yuki, I feel, has a lot of potential, and I feel like him partnering up with Max Verstappen could be a really fiery opportunity. And I think that Max could easily take it and easily deal with the likes of Yuki. He's gotten to know him quite a lot over the last few years and has probably gotten the measure of the man, probably being able to figure out what exactly to do if Yuki does get a little bit hot-headed. Because Max Verstappen, he himself can get hot-headed too. So in a way, there's a little bit of relatability. And also, their senses of humour, I feel like they could really bond as teammates. I feel like they could have a lot of fun in terms of the social media activity. But we're not talking about the social media activity here. We're talking about the pace. And that hot-headedness that could be both a blessing and a curse because there have been moments when Yuki has been extremely immature and he provides some really good solid results. Give him a car that can really be at the front, I think he could excel. But at the same time, if things don't go his way, he can be extremely aggressive and borderline dangerous, as we saw in Bahrain in the cool down lap where he was just throwing his car around like crazy and almost colliding with Daniel. You don't collide with your teammate and you don't use a car like that as a weapon. You don't. You don't do that. But all of this is making the battle between himself and Ricardo the head to head to watch. Forget Sainz and Leclerc. Forget Piastri and Norris. Watch what happens with Ricardo and Tsunoda over the course of the year, because that battle for the second Red Bull seat is mighty. And yes, it's getting all the more desperate because Checo is looking all the more solid. That means these two drivers, the two big candidates to take over as Verstappen's teammate, have to try even harder to impress in a car which is looking less and less likely to be scoring decent points. Even though they were lauding this as an RB19 facsimile, the rebirth of the pink Mercedes where you get podiums consistently and solid points finishes. They were having argy-bargy sessions when they were fighting for 13th place. So... That is something to watch here, my friend. That is a very curious development. But when push comes to shove, Tsunoda so far has been able to provide some good results. And yes, it was only Q3 in Jeddah, but it was a Q3 that people probably didn't expect for that car just yet. And Daniel wasn't able to do that. And yes, I think we can move on to him right now because Daniel Ricciardo, dear, that was a fall down. Nobody was expecting Daniel to have this much trouble. Everyone was expecting when he came in for Hungary for him to completely wipe the floor with Yuki, a rebirth of Daniel Ricciardo as hyped up by Christian Horner, saying that, oh, he'd merely lost his way at McLaren and that him being back in the Red Bull fold would bring him back to the glory days that he was in 2018. And we did get a glimpse of that in Mexico when he was trying out his setup and he qualified fourth and he got a huge amount of points, easily contributing to Alvatari getting off at the bottom of the constructors. That is something to remember, credit where credit is due. But 2024 has really not started off the way that Daniel had hoped for. Yes, of course, it is important to note that there were some things in Jeddah especially that were against Daniel. He had a terrible pit stop, which he lost a minute upwards. Then he had an issue in Q2, which compromised his Q2 run. So that means he couldn't keep up to Yuki. But even then in the race, he wasn't really making much of an impact when he could catch up to the Magnussen train because eventually Ricardo did catch up. And then he did a self-admitted lapse of concentration where he span out in front of Checo which is ironic in a way because that's the guy he was hoping to replace at Red Bull. This is not the same Daniel that we saw at the Pirelli tyre test. Do I think he's washed? No, but I don't think he's at his best in terms of confidence. And I remember seeing an edit where there was an interview race reaction of him when he was in McLaren in 2022 and where he is right now. He looked the same way, forlorn, confused, not really sure what on earth is going on. That is a Daniel Ricciardo that we really don't want to see. And it's the same thing that is making me think, well, is it really a guarantee that he's going to get back up to the top chair? I don't think so at the moment. He might either be in purgatory at racing balls for the rest of his career, which is something that is not his intention. His intention for being in that team is to get up to the top team again, or he might find himself being replaced ironically as he replaced Nick DeVries by the likes of Liam Lawson, perhaps. But it's his early days still. We need to remember that there are plenty of races that suit Daniel more. 
we might see a complete tour de force and a complete 180 where Daniel is scoring multiple points. He might get a cheeky podium once the car comes to him and there are more upgrades coming along. But right now, and going back to Hungary, he's really not completely trans Yuki in the way that people expected. This is something that is starting to make people think, well, hang on a minute, this isn't necessarily a guarantor that he's going to be partnering with Verstappen. Sure, people might want to see it, but he might not be the driver that everybody was expecting. Checo is not floundering at the moment. Of course, he could flounder, and if he does and Daniel steps up, then that all changes again. But right now, Checo is just getting those positions, and if he can keep getting P2s, then why change the status quo? Because it works. And with Checo starting to carve out that second seat at Red Bull, it's going to make the battle for the V-carb seat all the more important. And one of them could be usurped Tsunoda or Ricardo by the likes of Liam Lawson, the next choice. Or, even more shockingly, Lawson might usurp them both and end up right next to Max Verstappen. Why do I think this? Well, it's all to do with what happened with Oli Behrman. Yes, I am aware that the Oli Behrman hype is really starting to grate some people, but it is something that does deserve to be discussed here. As soon as I saw the episode of Drive to Survive with him featured in it, you could tell that losing out on a seat for 2024 was a galling experience for Liam. Especially when you do see the likes of Oli Behrman come in and do something similar at Ferrari. In fact, even more so. It is a crying shame that Liam Lawson didn't get a seat right away after him subbing in for Daniel Ricciardo and putting on a very convincing display. Him not really putting much of a foot wrong and scoring some decent points and ingratiating himself into the world of the F1 fan in probably one of the worst cars on the grid because let's just remember ourselves here. Behrman coming in and getting P7 was in the second fastest car. So there's something to temper folks here that yeah you got the second fastest car get p7 you got one of the worst cars last year and he gets p9 and at one of the hardest tracks to do so that's something to be said here but what this could spark behrman's appearance and his shocking p7 and becoming the youngest ferrari driver ever is this might finally rekindle the desire of F1 teams to rely on younger drivers again, instead of sending them off to reserve driver purgatory and then keeping older drivers in for the fact that, you know, they're a safe pair of hands, you don't have to worry about the cost cap, and also now they're popular. They're extremely popular and they have all the means. The way that people took to Behrman and welcomed him in with open arms is a cause for celebration. Red Bull might take a look at what happened with Ferrari, bringing in their reserve driver, and go, He's 18 years old and he didn't crash the car. We have a young reserve driver. Liam might be good. Why don't we just stick him in there with Max? Yeah, he can learn from a multiple world champion. And he knows the entire hierarchy of Red Bull and he wouldn't step on Max's toes. That is a really interesting twist. And if Red Bull decide to mimic what Ferrari did, that would be a huge coup. And also a sign for Yuki Tsunoda that, yeah, you're not going to be getting that seat anymore unless Max takes a sudden departure. And Daniel Ricciardo, oh, um, again, it would probably come down to the fact if Max decides to leave and then they might want a safe pair of hands to go along with the rookie. So the only way that Ricciardo would get into Red Bull is if Max would disappear. But in reality, I don't really see this happening. I don't think Red Bull will want to take this much of a gamble. More likely, I think one of the other drivers at Racing Bulls might get the chop or they might get a swift upgrade if Checo completely falls off, and then Lawson will have to do his time at V-Carb before he can then go up to the top team. Then, okay, this next one is a chaotic choice, but I want it so badly. Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen, don't you just love the idea? Carlos and Max at Toro Rosso were closer than most expected, and Sainz was only removed from the Red Bull arrangement as the signs were clear that Carlos was hitting the glass ceiling of the Red Bull camp and thusly, he went off to Renault on loan and then ended up with Ferrari, where he's proven to be a remarkably dependable driver who is quick on his feet and resourceful in the car. That is a quality of driver that many teams out there crave. No wonder the rumours keep on saying that Audi want Carlos Sainz to be their lead driver. If it were up to me and I were leading an F1 team, I was a boss, I would sign Carlos Sainz in a heartbeat because he's a guy who is quick on his toes and is able to think on the fly a really good improvisationalist, kind of like Fernando Alonso in a way, who can observe everything that's going on on the track, not just his own car. That is a very important skill to have. So if, if you had Sainz and Alonso in the same team, I think that'd be incredibly great. That's why maybe Aston Martin and Alonso might actually be quite a good idea too with Sainz. But either way, we're talking about Sainz and Verstappen at Red Bull. I think it would be so much fun, but based on all of the Red Bull drama, I don't see this happening. It's become quite clear that Jos Verstappen is now starting to become quite vocal at the Milton Keynes team. And considering that he did come to verbal blows with Carlos Sainz Sr, who was not afraid to speak up for his own son, 
if things were looking a little bit unequal for them, then you just get the feeling that that might happen again. But this time, the stakes would be even higher. It wouldn't be for scrapping for maybe 8th or 7th or something like that, most likely maybe P9. This would be going for a title campaign, for podiums. This would be hugely different and probably the tension in that environment with both of those fathers right there and these two drivers who are very keen to have a little bit of a round two situation, that might make things even worse where they are right now. And Horner really does not want to take the risk of two alpha drivers trying to one up one another, especially with Carlos Sainz, who's very keen to be a team leader. But Ferrari, he just was expected to be the second driver and he then tried to be the lead driver. And even now with the car geared towards Leclerc, Science is now giving them a headache still. I, I imagine Red Bull would not only have a singular headache, they would be having cluster migraines right now if they signed Science. But come on, come on. You want it, surely. You want that. Oh, it would be amazing. Round two, Toro Rosso, Red Bull, let's go. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm going to calm down now because we're going to be talking about another Spaniard. Fernando joining Red Bull. Is this really likely? Well, in a way, if you were to ask me that a few years ago, I'd be saying, come on, really? Even just a few months ago, I'd be just going, oh dear, that would be really chaotic. But now, with Fernando the way he is, and the way he's more circumspect than he used to be, I think he could make that work being a teammate of Verstappen. Those two talk about each other very, very fondly. They respect one another to bits. Fernando really values Max Verstappen's skills and overall demeanor. And Max respects Fernando Alonso's achievements and his tenacity and versatility, especially when it comes to the world of endurance, because that is a field where Max Verstappen really wants to go to one day. You can find him at the hotel ready for the Grand Prix at three o'clock in the morning, doing a sim race with his teammates for Redline and Verstappen.com. It's crazy. He does not get any sleep. If you were to have a moment when you had Alonso and Verstappen as teammates, could they actually be really mature about it and work together to provide a really good outfit and enjoy the opportunity of working together, testing the water? For if one day they set up their own racing team for endurance, they would definitely be teammates and then maybe rope in another person to come in and join them. I would love to see that eventually, if Fernando retires and Verstappen moves on, or Verstappen decides to go, you know what, screw it, I'm going to do it anyway, and do Formula 1 at the same time. But seeing those two together in the same overalls is very enticing, and I'm thinking more and more likely now they could make it work and keep it classy and mature. But right now, I don't think Horner would allow it, because those two are big alpha drivers. They are the most alpha drivers out there, especially Fernando when it comes to the memes. So the initial prognosis would not be ideal. But you feel like Fernando is not the same Fernando that he was in 2007 when he was dueling for the title with Lewis Hamilton. Things have changed since then. Then we got a legacy from my last video, Nico Hülkenberg. Yeah, I don't really see that happening realistically, but it would be a fan favorite. I don't think people would hate this idea, but they would probably question the logic of this decision because yeah, Nico Hülkenberg is a dependable driver and he is a very solid points grabber, partnering with Checo at Force India to get them really good results in the constructors. That is something to commend, but would it really be a sound decision for the long term though? Would it be just one of those one and done situations where you just give him one season to maybe get a podium or two, cure that itch, scratch it, so that means people are happy that go, yay, Nico got a podium. And then he can just retire having finally gotten that off of his back, being the guy who had the most races under his belt with no podiums, that would be gone. It would mainly just be there as pure fan service, but hey, it's really nice fan service in my opinion. So I just wanted to say that anyway, because I still like the idea, I find it cute. But out of all of these, what would be my favorite? I mean, come on, Carlos Sainz. Oh my giddy art, that would be amazing. And also I feel like Carlos Sainz is responsible for sort of the calamity that we have seen when it comes to the Red Bull succession plan and where the Red Bull junior team and the program has wound itself up having had to have a major cull in the last few months. So if you want to go and look at my video as to why I explained the Red Bull driver catastrophe was down to the hands of Carlos Sainz, you can go and watch this video next because I'm quite proud of it and I think you'll like it too.